Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel where we're playing the first battle of Kernstown from GMT Games' Death Valley Battles for Shenandoah. This is the third turn of the scenario, the 1800 hours turn. So, sorry it took me so long to get this out there, but I had recorded this turn and then I had reviewed some of the comments from my previous video and decided I didn't like how many mistakes I made in uh, this turn. So what I've done is I've tried to put everything back to the end of the 1700 hours turn and now we're going to get stuck in again, try it again with fewer hours hopefully. Though knowing me I'll probably get the things that I got wrong the first time I'll get those right and then I'll get new stuff wrong this go through. But that's life so we're going to see how it goes. Um, without further ado let's go ahead with the initiative. Uh, I've already forgotten who had the overall initiative last turn, so we're not going to do the plus one DRM for that. We're just going to do a straight die roll for initiative. And Confederates have it. Luckily, the uh, plus one wouldn't have affected the result anyway, either way. So now we have our efficiency determination. So the Confederates are efficiency three, plus one for Jackson, so he's four. And Kimball is a two. For the orders, we're not going to change anything. Jackson wants to be able to be flexible with the advance orders in case his right gives way. He can start retreating his units and not be at half movement. Same thing with Kimball. He can get up in the face of the cannons under advance orders, and so he doesn't need to be in attack. We'll leave Tyler in attack for now, um, and Sullivan, he's just going to want to be able to exploit any breakthrough of the artillery, so um, he's going to stay in advance as well. So Jackson is going to choose to play his artillery AM first, and now we place the rest of the chits into the draw cup. And now we go ahead and act activate the uh, artillery, so I'll bring you in there to show you what's happening. So for his first activation, Jackson's going to fire off his artillery batteries up here on Sandy Ridge and try to drive off the Union. The re Union really wanted the first activation, I can tell you what, because now uh, the artillery's going to get a chance to fire them. But at least for a couple of these units, they'll be able to fire back at the artillery. So maybe we'll get lucky on those return fire die rolls. So I'm going to go ahead and do all that off screen and bring you back to show you the results. All right, so at the end of the artillery activation, the uh, Allegheny battery was able to drive back, I believe it was the 8th Ohio, but they did um, suffer out of ammo and the return fire made them disordered and lose a gun. Um, here with the Augusta battery, the um, they lost the gun as well and Forced back, I believe the maybe the 13th Indiana, and then that was it as far as losses go. So not too bad, I don't think, for the Union. It could have been worse. However, Jackson is now worried about this out of ammo Allegheny battery, and this area is looking pretty weak. So let's go ahead and draw the next chit, and it's going to be the Union Cavalry. So the only thing we'd consider doing with the Union Cavalry is firing with these two brigades up here onto the left flank of Jackson's line. However, if we do so, they'll be able to fire back and we could lose victory points because we're losing cavalry. So we're not that desperate yet. It's good enough that we're threatening the flank and preventing the Confederates from doing anything silly in that direction. So we'll go ahead and pick our next AM. It is a random event, so go ahead and roll. A seven is nothing, so we just go ahead and keep picking. And we're back with the Confederate artillery. All right, so we're going to do a lot of the same things. We're going to fire off these two batteries, and down off map or off screen, there's the is this the Hampton battery which is out of command, so it's only going to get uh, two activations, I believe. And so 
We're also going to have to get the Allegheny battery out of here. We're going to try to get it back onto this road over here, get it out of the way, live the fight another day sort of thing because it's doing absolutely no good there. So I'll go ahead and do all that and bring you back to show you what it looks like at the end. So now at the end of the artillery's activation, the smoothbore, the West Augusta battery, they fired separately. So they're out of ammo. The 10 pound power to the Rockbridge artillery is at low ammo. And none of the uh, Union were really f forced to retreat. Uh, this one brigade, the 62nd Ohio, uh, did take a, sorry, uh, the 62nd Ohio, it's a regiment, not a brigade, um, took a step loss. Sullivan survived though. So that's the Confederate artillery activation. Next activation is Jackson, who has some work to do over here. So Jackson has some work to do. We're going to activate Fulkerson's Brigade first. We're going to remove, we're going to unrefuse, and we're going to change the 37th Virginia's facing by one hex because we're pretty safe to bet. It's a pretty safe bet that Tyler is going to have to take a turn to reorganize his forces. We want to address this cavalry. So now we are facing the cavalry and we're going to attack him or fire at him. So we're at minus one because minus one for disorder, minus one for the stone wall, plus one for the rifles. Six. On the seven chart is an automatic disorder. The cavalry will get the fire back with three SPs. With the carbines at range two, it's minus one. Minus one for the stone wall for minus two overall. Oh, but a, a seven with a strength three is a D plus one. And the Confederates pass it, 37 Virginia passes. So the first Michigan is disordered. And since the first Michigan took a disorder, the first Ohio has to do a disorder or cohesion check, and they're good. Fulkerson's remaining brigade doesn't have anything to shoot at. So now we'll activate Burke's brigade. Um, first Virginia Battalion, I don't think we're going to shoot at the 7th Indiana because it's just um, going to get smacked on the return fire. What we are going to do, though, is... I think we'll retreat, well, we'll move the 21st Virginia back into this hex with the uh, 1st Virginia Battalion. We spent a couple of moving points to enter and then a couple more to turn around. So Burke's remaining brigade is down here, 42nd Virginia. Um, I'm calling this little there's like a little ridge right here, and these two units are um, at lower height than this little ridge right here. So I'm going to say that this line of sight is blocked. So the 42nd Virginia is going to fire at the 39th Illinois. A range of two for plus one with the rifles. It's a nine. And nine on strength six is a one and an automatic disorder which means the 39th Virginia is going to take two losses so they're going to be down to seven because they're already disordered so I'm just gonna move that there and now the um, 39th Illinois is going to be able to fire back at the 42nd Virginia with seven strength points that you were already disordered for a minus one the rifles are a plus one so it is a sh oh, sorry and a minus one for this stone wall so it's a minus one overall and a zero doesn't cut it so they retreat one hex and are down to seven steps now we'll activate Garnett's Brigade so the only thing Garnett's Brigade is going to do, they moved up to 5th Virginia, which happened off off screen down here towards the middle road. 
but then they're going to fire the second Virginia at the first West Virginia. So we have our rifles at a range of three for minus two, and there's no train or anything, so it's just a minus two. And oops, uh, five. Oh, so there are now, of course, low ammo. A five, and they have six strength points. So a five is a D plus one. And we'll roll. And the, oh boy, poor first West Virginia. So second Virginia suffers low ammo. First uh, West Virginia suffers another um, step loss and retreat. And of course they get the fire back, but with their muskets, they get the fire back with seven SPs with their muskets at range three. Uh, so they can't, muskets don't have a range of three. So they don't get the fire back. And we just have to roll for Tyler. He's fine. And that is Jackson's division activation complete. Um, we still have time. I don't, I don't want to move too soon. Um, but maybe we should have adjusted our line. I don't know. We'll see. That's the fun of this game is being shown how bad of a commander you are. So next activation is the Union Artillery, which I'll go ahead and do off screen and show you the results. So Dom over here really just couldn't can't hit anything to save the Union's life. He fired one battery at, what is this, the West Augusta battery, missed. Fired two batteries at Burke's Brigade here, and both neither inflicted any damage. So that's the Union Artillery activation complete. Next activation is... The Union Artillery again, and Dom is gonna, he's gonna hit something one of these days. Let's go ahead and see if he does. So Dom's Artillery up here on Pritchard's Hill again, targeted Burke's uh, regiment over here on the middle road, and it's all sound and fury signifying nothing. They got a few disorder checks on the uh, Confederate unit, which they passed, and one of the uh, Union Artillery pieces is now low ammo. So that's the second Union Artillery activation completed. And they're out of command, so they get one fewer um, activation this turn. Next chip is the Confederate Cavalry. So we're not doing anything with the Confederate Cavalry because Chu's battery is out of ammo. So they're just hanging out down there on the back road. Next chip is Jackson. And with one activation already played for Jackson, it means he has this one plus two more shields. Well, Kimball will have two activations. And I think it might, well, so we wanna hold our victory point hex. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna pause, see what I wanna do and bring you back to show you what happens. All right, so Jackson's division, what we've done is we've moved the 27th Virginia from its point here on the stone wall. We brought it around to this point to protect our right flank on the reverse side of this uh, slope of Sandy Ridge. We brought the 5th Virginia finally is up here on the stone wall next to Burke's brigade, uh, well, Burke and the 42nd Virginia. And... Um, so now we kind of have this covered off, but of course we had to rob Peter to pay Paul over here. But hopefully since Tyler is gonna need some time to regroup, um, we have a bit of a respite. We're not firing anybody because we can't really afford to have any more low ammo in case the Union decides to get in close with us. So that's Jackson's activation complete. Next activation. So this is what it looks like at the end of Kimball's activation. 
We did some rallying in Sullivan's Brigade. We also moved up to 5th Ohio, split it into two battalions, which we probably should have done earlier. Now they're not a mass target, but they'll, they're quickly kind of coming on the flank of Burke's Brigade. Um, the 13th Indiana, we also broke down the battalions and moved it forward. And 14th Indiana got a good movement um, up into the face, or almost onto the crest of Sandy Ridge. Um, Kimball also rallied a couple of his units, and Tyler attempted to rally his units, but only got, I think, the 29th Ohio rallied. And now we have the 7th Indiana is the only thing we have left to kind of deal with. Um, if we shock assaulted, or shock attacked, whatever you want to call it, um, we'd have to split our SPs into both of these frontal hexes. So I don't think we want to do that. There's, I mean, there's, um, these guys are in the woods. I think this is a victory point hex for the Union anyway, so we kind of want to hold it. So let's see if we can just shoot at the 4th Virginia. We're going to get slapped back, though. Yeah, saying that now, I don't know if I want to, because if we shoot at the 4th Virginia, we're going to get slapped in the face by all three of these units in their return fire. So I think the 7th Indiana is just going to hold tight because um, and wait for reinforcements to come up. They're not going to try to be heroes. So that's going to be shields activation completed. I don't know what these guys are doing facing off against each other, not really shooting or anything, but sometimes that's war. So next is the Confederate Cavalry, which again, don't really have much to do. Um, I guess this is kind of me being lazy. We could move it around, be clever with it, but uh, we're not going to. So we're just going to motor on. Next activation is Jackson, and he's going to have some decisions to make over on this flank. So let me pause it and bring you back when I figure that all out. Okay, for Jackson's activation, we didn't really do much. Again, we're kind of in the waiting game with Jackson because we're happy with our hold of the stone wall. Um, we have this stone wall down here hold, held. These are the only two units that fired. Um, on the return fire, the, one of the battalions of the 5th Ohio um, got low ammo, but that was it. Nobody else inflicted any damage or anything. So now we're just pulling the next chip. And the Confederates are just waiting for the Union to make a move. They're the ones that have to step up to the plate here. Uh, Union Cavalry, again, could move some stuff around, like let's just the first West Virginia Cavalry. But because we lose victory points if we lose um, Cavalry um, strength points, we're not going to do anything. We will try to rally, actually, the first Michigan but with a four, he doesn't rally. So that's that. Next chit is Jackson again. And this is Jackson's last activation. So he needs to have everything right for how he wants it. Knowing, well, not knowing, but there's a possibility that Kimball still has a bunch of activations left in the cup. And so he has to be prepared for two, one, two, or three, I think. Activate, yeah, activation still for Kimball. Um, he would, I think Jackson still has some artillery activations in there to take care of this. We'll probably want to retreat these guys, maybe. Well, yeah, actually, since they're out of ammo, we definitely want to retreat them, which will leave this gap open. So I'm thinking what we have to do is move these guys onto Sandy Ridge more and kind of seed the middle road um, and kind of just keep pulling back our line because if the Union get into this area then these guys will be cut off from Jackson though of course they could just retreat down the middle road and you can't see but the middle road links up with this road um, I forget what this road is called but down here off screen they link up together so it wouldn't be the end of the world if these two get cut off by an incursion here. And I do like them on the flank. So there I go. See, this is why I usually pause when I'm doing my thinking because I just sound like a madman if I um, talk about my thought process on this camera. So Jackson will just fire these two regiments off, I think, and then call it a day and hope that 
Kimball doesn't have a bunch of activations remaining. So not much happened in this exchange. A couple of uh, disorder checks, which everybody passed. So that's going to be Jackson's 1800 hours turn. Now I got to see what the Union have in store for him. Next shit is Confederate Cavalry, like usual. And next shit is Shields, Kimball. So let's go ahead and see what Kimball is going to get going. So the first brigade we're going to activate with Kimball is Sullivan's Brigade. And what I think we're going to do is um, try to change his orders to attack. So we look on the Brigade Change Orders table. Um, the Brigadier is in stacked with the division. He's not stacked with the overall command. And his orders rating is a zero. So, so now we roll. It's just a straight die roll. A nine. I'll see as a, a change and we don't we get to change and do our action. We don't have to stand. So that's awesome for the Union. So now Sullivan's Brigade is under attack orders. And now let's see what we got going um, for that. Okay, here's the end of Sullivan's Brigade's movement and shooting. There wasn't any shooting, but we did move up into shock attack range of uh, these two regiments on the stone wall. We stayed out of the three hex reaction range fire of Danville, I believe it is, artillery, Hamden, sorry, artillery down here, just off screen. And now uh, we, sorry, we also rallied to 13th Indiana, A Battalion, B Battalion didn't rally, and we have the 39th Illinois coming up in support. Um, I could have probably moved it into this hex. Um, there's it would have been obeying stacking, but I, I want to at least have somebody that's learning my lesson from Tyler. I want to have somebody that's in not disordered. So now it's time for some shock attacks. So we're declaring all shock attacks. So Sullivan and his regiment are going to be attacking the 5th Virginia. And the 5th Ohio, its two brigades are going to be attacking the, sorry, its two battalions are going to be attacking the 42nd Virginia. Retreat before shock. Now here's a question that I need to, I think, pause and think about. All right, this is a, this is a tricky one. My gut reaction is to retreat. We, do, we don't have any victory point hexes down here. Um, we don't need to throw SPs away in an attack, or in a shock, I mean. We're gonna be flanked, we, or 5th Ohio has positioning on the 42nd Virginia. So, I think we're just gonna retreat before shock. We're gonna retreat the 42nd Virginia one hex here. And the 5th Virginia one hex here to join the rock bridge artillery. And that serves a double purpose. That allows the infantry to cover the rock bridge artillery as well. And yes, we're seeding this stone wall hex and we're seeding ground on the right of our flank and exposing this artillery unit. However, I don't know. Let me know in the comments if you think I should have st stood and fought that shock, but that effectively uh, concludes the shock assault. So now we just resolve the shock by moving the units into their, uh, the hex is vacated by the Confederates. All right, hopefully I get this right, but 5th Ohio recombined after advanced into the vacant hex. And I think the 62nd Ohio just moved into the vacant hex there as well. And both became disordered for the after post-shock automatic disorder, but they do have the Stonewall Hex now. And I think um, Burke's, or Sullivan's gonna be quite happy with that. So that's Sullivan's Brigade activation completed. Now let's move on to Kimball. So Kimball moved up a couple of regiments, rallied the 67th Ohio, moved himself up to one of his lead regiments be closer to Sullivan 
And now I think we activated Tyler. We rallied the West Virginia regiment that he was hanging out with. And I think we're gonna fire with the 7th Indiana on the 4th Virginia. Now that we have Kimball coming up um, and some of the rest of Tyler's brigade coming into uh, coming in the rally, we're, I think we're okay to start shooting with the 7th Indiana. So 7th Indiana has muskets, range of one for plus two, prepared fire for plus three. I think that's it. Their 4th Virginia is not in any kind of terrain. So plus three on this die roll. So seven on a seven strength unit is a automatic disorder. Now, a lot of Confederate unit, a lot of Confederate units get to fire back. So we'll start Fourth Virginia. They are also on prepared fire with their rifles at range one. So it's plus one, plus two, and Seventh Indiana is not in any kind of uh, terrain. So a four on the four column is a disorder check. Cohesion to seven. Zero, they pass, so the 4th Virginia is disordered. Now, we're going to shoot off the 1st Virginia Battalion. Um, same thing, rifles prepared for plus 2. A 4 on the 4 column, again, is just a disorder check. And, oh, it was almost a seven, I can't see. But a one passes, so nothing going on there. Seventh Indiana, so far is rewarded um, with its uh, bravery there, facing up toe to toe against the uh, Virginians. But that's gonna be Kimball's activation complete, I believe, I don't think, I don't see anything else we need to do. Um, hopefully I got all the shock stuff right and not missing anything egregious. So with that, I think there's only one activation left in the cup, and it is Jackson's artillery. And this is gonna be interesting. We have um, the Rockbridge artillery here, gonna be firing point blank probably at uh, Sullivan, but we're gonna be moving them, so they're gonna get some negative die roll modifiers, I think. Gonna have to move these out of ammo um, artillery units back. So I'm gonna go ahead and do most of that, I think, off screen and show you the results. All right, so here's how it looks at the end of the activations. I know I'm missing some fatigue. Um, sometimes it's just, I need to start writing it down on paper or something because I keep forgetting who, um, activated so many times and whatnot. Um, Sullivan gets the first shock for free. He only activated twice, so I don't think he gets a fatigue marker. Um, but Burks activated a bunch of times. Garnett activated a bunch of times. The artillery activated a bunch of times, so I'm pretty confident that they all got an increase in fatigue. Basically, we, we ran with these two batteries of artillery which are out of ammo. I realized afterwards that this road would now be an interesting avenue of attack for the Union uh, Cavalry to attack the retreating Confederate um, artillery. Uh, maybe I'll try that in the dusk turn. But um, yeah, I think both sides maybe are okay with this situation. The Confederates still have a lot of victory hexes here on the stone wall. However, uh, the Union do have, I think, one victory hex. Let me double check. Okay, so the Union need this hex, which the seventh Indiana's in, this hex, and this hex. They need to control all three of those to get um, the victory points shifted in their favor, which I think they'll be able to do next turn, in the dusk turn. Um, we'll change Kimball's brigade's orders in the division orders change phase, and then move them up the one uh, hex and then we'll control that and then Sullivan will be able to um, push Burke out of the way and maybe wrap around or at least threaten 
to wrap around Jackson. Maybe he can pin these two regiments in place and wrap around with the 13th Indiana with Kimball. Um, but I don't know that the Union, unless they get a really good active efficiency pull, I don't know that they're going to be able to get all the way around there in the last turn of the scenario. And I think Jackson's men will be able to pull out in time. Anyway, that's the end of this turn. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments if you saw any mess ups. I'm sure there are some. Um, and let me know if you would do anything strategically different. You know, it's it's fun getting told off on the rules, but it's also fun to hear about different tactics or strategies that you guys would use. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video, which will be the dust turn, the last turn of the scenario. Bye for now.